Okay, good morning to everyone. Uh, let's start. Any question from uh, yesterday? Lecture? Bill or Simon? Are you Si Yuan? Oh, okay. Can you later come to see me to talk about your assignment uh, submission? Okay. Uh, you, uh, please contact to uh, that's our class representative. He can add you to our group in chat. Okay, so if you have any problem, you can ask there. Hey, what happened to the rest? Huh? Don't know. Okay, so yesterday, where did we stop? Yesterday, we stopped at the definition of topology. Okay, so we stopped at the definition of topology. So can we recall what the topology is? What's the topology? Okay, so, so a topology on a set is a collection of subset, right? Of the subset of X of X itself, okay. And then having three properties, okay. Having three properties, they are collection of subset that having three properties here. Yeah. So first property is this collection of subset must include empty set and the full set. Okay. And it is closed under finite intersection. Okay. It is closed under finite intersection and it is closed under arbitrary union. Okay, close union. And this very resembles what we have in the metric space. Okay, this is what we got in our metric space. Is if we consider the uh, open set by open board. Okay. So although yesterday we left uh, metric space, but uh, throughout this uh, course, we will frequently come back and visit uh, metric space either by using metric space as a specific examples, or we will study the property of metric space along with uh, generalization of it in the topological space. Okay, and actually, in the end, hopefully, in the very end, uh, we will talk about how to go from topological space to metric space. So meaning, if you have a topological space, when is it, uh, when you can give distance to the space? Okay, can you always give a distance to any topological space or not? Okay, this is the final, uh, hopefully the final theorem we will look at it. Okay, metrizable uh, theorem, okay, whether the space is, uh, can be metrizable. Okay. okay, so um, topology. So this is a topology on X and uh, elements of T are called the open set. Okay. If your set satisfies these properties, they are open sets. And, uh, uh, so what's the topological space? So topological space. 
it's just a pair of it's a pair of x with the topology. Okay. So uh, yesterday we have gone through some examples. So one of it is uh, uh, metric space. So metric spaces are topological spaces. And yesterday we also look at different topologies. element set element set so what kind of topology we what else what what else uh, we can um, study so look let's look at more examples okay let's look at more examples so uh, there's a very Easy one, okay. Since we are considering collection of subset, right? Why not we just consider all the subset? Okay, we could just consider all the subset as the topology x and then power set of x, all of them. Okay, we declare all the subset are open. Okay, and this is what we call the discrete topology. Okay, it's discrete. Even the singleton are open. Okay. So this discrete topology. And uh, there's another even easier one. Okay, we call it a trivial or indiscrete topology. Is we just consider what? X and the empty set as the open set. Okay, just these two are open. Okay. So it is trivial. Okay. X intercept empty is empty. X union empty is X if so. So the uh, uh, second and third condition are satisfied. First condition automatically satisfied. Okay. In this group, okay, you cannot differentiate uh, the subset. Other subset inside X, okay, other points. Inside X, you only see whole thing, or you either see nothing, right? Okay, but this week we declare even all the singleton as open. Okay, what else? Um, we can study another topology, uh, which is called the finite complement. Okay, finite complement topology. Or sometimes you see the name cofinite. Okay, so seeing these words, what do you think of it? There's some finiteness there. Okay, and then somehow there's something to do with complement. Okay, complement of what? So uh, let's define this topology for you. So we always start with just a set. Okay, very simple, just a set. Okay, and what's the topology here? What's the topology here? So we declare all the set, all the subset of X, okay, such that X complement is finite, okay, finite element. Or if you take the complement of U, it is just X, in particular, in uh, uh, empty set satisfies this property here. Okay. Otherwise, if you just keep the first one, x, take away empty is x, is x. If x is not finite, then you cannot include empty set. Okay. So you need the second property there. Okay. So these are, uh, these are, these make up the cofinite topology here. Okay. So it is very easy to see that X and infinity is in here, okay, because these two property uh, somehow tailor for it, okay. But how do you see that uh, 
finite inter intersection is in there. And uh, arbitrary union. Okay. How do you see that these two are in there? What do you need to check in this uh, topology? What's, what, what is smaller than infinity? If it's finite, then it is in the set. If it is equal to x, it is in the set. Okay, is it true that this uh, cardinality of these two are finite or not? Why? How do you check? All right, so you can use De Morgan's law and then you get that. This is a finite union of x away ui but ui itself is in the set okay so it is either finite or x so if you union them together either you get everything or either you get finite because this is just a finite union okay how about arbitrary union similarly you use the morgan's law okay complement of uh, union so you get intersection of x minus u alpha. If one of them is finite, then you are good. Um, and then you might get empty set as well. That depends. Okay. So you will get small, I mean, less, less element when you compute the cardinality. Make sense? Make sense? Okay. If you are, if you feel a bit shaky, uh, please construct the argument now. Okay. So far, do you guys understand what I say? Don't believe what I say. Uh. You can ask them. Okay. Please ask. Whenever you don't understand, right? Please ask. Um, like yesterday, we have a FYP meeting uh, with uh, Longyan and uh, Gary. We speak about this uh, importance of having idea. Okay. In research, right, what is most important is not that you're doing the right thing or wrong thing, but having a right idea is very important. Okay. If you don't have idea, uh, actually you have nothing to do. You don't know what to do. Okay. So the important thing is you come up with your own idea, own gen uh, original idea. Okay. Such as this kind of knowledge. Uh, why on earth people will like create this kind of knowledge? Because this is their idea. Okay, so you now you are just studying others' idea. But the question here, you are coming to uni, right? Can you generate your own ideas? Right? Okay, so to generate your own idea, right? It's very important that you care about your own thinking. Okay, can you unstuck? You get stuck, can you unstuck yourself or not? Getting stuck is very easy, but getting unstuck is kind of a skill. Okay, so that's why you come here. Okay, no. and uh, I can try and help you if I can. Okay, so, right, continue. So, four, uh, we can consider even uh, larger family. So, we can consider countable complement. Sometimes we call the core countable topology. So you can kind of guess what is this already, right? So previously we consider finitely many. So now we consider the cardinality of the complement to be countable. Okay, what's countable? What's countable? Yeah? Finite or denumerable, okay? Finite or denumerable. So the complement is either finite or denumerable. Okay, so similarly, you can use the similar argument to say that average union and finite intersection is in the set. Okay, similar argument. 
Okay, so far, okay or not? About the 4G. Yeah. Okay, you can see that uh, from yesterday examples, right? You can you have quite a lot of freedom to build uh, topology, right? You just need to consider collection of subset of the set such that it satisfies the three properties. That's all. Okay, then you have topological space. That's all. Okay. And later we will see how this uh, can generalize to continuous function and so on. Okay, but for now, okay, top what is topological spaces? It's just a set, right? It's just a set with a topology. So what's topology? Collection of subset. Okay, collection subset of X. Not all the subset you take, but you only take those that can satisfy the three properties. Three properties. Namely, empty set. And the whole space is in your choice. And then it is closed under finite intersection and closed under arbitrary union. That's all. Okay. So since we have so many topology, right? So on the space, I mean, we can define different topology on the space. Like yesterday, we have defined like nine topologies, at least nine on the uh, space of three elements. So can we compare the two topology or not? Okay, how we compare the two topology. So we're gonna define this. So suppose uh, you have two topology on your space. Okay. If okay, if this uh, T prime okay is uh, not is, but this T prime contain uh, T. We will say that T prime is finer than T. Okay, what does finer mean? You know what does finer means? I mean, in, in English, first, what's finer mean? And finer, fine sand. The sound you and see her and see her you who true fine sand right? fine. But what does fine mean to you? Ah, you can, you can. What does fine mean to you? Fine dining. What does fine mean to you? So, Anderson, go idea. Huh? Detail. Hmm. Can? Yeah, more detail. Sure. Sure, more detail. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that T primes contain T. So whatever you can find in T, I can find in T prime. So T prime could potentially contain more things than T. Okay, so it's like there's more description than probably, right? So T prime is finer than T. And if uh, if um, they are not equal, okay, if they are not equal, then we will say that uh, T prime is strictly finer, okay, strictly finer than T. Okay. On the other um, faces, we will say that actually uh, T is coarser than T prime. T is coarser than T prime. Or in uh, if it is a strict case, we will say it is uh, strictly so. Okay, in the two different. So if you can find one contains in the another, we will say that uh, T is comparable. Comparable of T prime if either T prime contain T or T contain. 
So you can see that somehow you can define a partial order on the topology. So I give you an example before we get uh, into remarks. Okay, let's take the example we have yesterday. Get the example we had yesterday. Let's see which one containing which. Okay, I make a nicer one. In this nine picture here, right? So we have say nine topology here. Can you see which one contain which? Which one contain which? Okay, I take the easiest one first, right? So T1 should be contained in every of the others, right? Okay. Yes. T9 contain everything. Okay, this is another S string. Okay, T9 contain everything. Right. What else? So T9 contain everything. Please. What else? T1 contain T2 or not? T4, eh? T4, is it? T4 contain T2? No, right? You don't have singleton on, or unless, I mean, let's fix, let's fix this, uh, the genuine, uh, let, let's fix this topology on the loss. Okay. So T2 has singleton on the second element here, but T4 has singleton on the first element. Has singleton on the second element. Six, right? Six also, seven also, right? Okay, so T6 contain T2, T7 contain T2. Also T8, right? So T8 contain T2. What else? Should be more, T7 in particular contain two else. So it contains T1, contains T2, and then anything else? It contains T3. Uh, how about T4? T4 contains T3, contains T1. Okay. So what do you mean by final here? So we will say that for example, for T, uh, T9 case, okay, let's say T9. So T9 contains all these things. So meaning T9 is finer than the rest. Okay, why is it finer? Sorry? Okay. Yeah, it is equal to power set. Uh, it is the discrete topology, right? So that's why we call it discrete, right? So it's finer, it's like mm, more details, right? Contain more details, right? Contain um, most of the topology, yes. In fact, everything. And you see, so T1 is uh, lying inside T9. So we say that T1 is coarser than T9. Right? So you, you can see that T1 is like almost nothing. Okay, just the whole space and just the empty space. Okay, right. so this is the a definition of finer and coarser, but uh, I want to uh, I want to introduce you maybe a bit imprecise and a bit um, a bit uh, confusing, but sometimes people will use the uh, will use this terminology here because let me, let me show you first and then uh, we will discuss about why they say this. So let's say T prime contain T, okay. Some people will say that T prime is actually larger than T. 
Okay. And on the other hand, T is smaller than T. Okay. Larger here means like you contain the others. Okay. But in terms of the open set you have, you have smaller open set. So finer. Okay, but you are large enough to contain others. Okay, so be careful when you use this one. Okay, don't confuse yourself between this uh, large, uh, small one, and then a uh, finer course. Okay, does it make sense? Does it make sense? Okay, okay. All right. So this is about uh, finer and coarser. How you compare to a podium? Next, uh, we will continue with the uh, basis for the module. Okay. So the first time you heard about basis is where? The first time you heard about basis. Linear algebra. Okay, so vector space, basis or vector space. But the basis we're going to discuss here is not really in the sense of uh, vector space basis, because in the vector space basis, every element should be uh, expressed uniquely, again, okay, by the basis. But here is not, okay? Here is not. We will see soon. So how we define the basis? So let's start with a set again. Okay, let's start with a set. Let's go to the space. It's a set. So what's the basis? Okay, what's the basis for topology on X? So again, it is a collection. Collection of what? Set again. It's a collection of subset. Sure, collection of subsets. And we call these a basis element. Okay, very similar to what we have in vector spaces. Such that two properties hold, okay. Such that two properties hold. Okay. First property is if you are a basis, okay, you should be able to cover all your elements. Okay, so this is the first property. For if point in X, okay, there exists one basis element that contain your point. Okay. You can use your uh, open set, okay, to cover your uh, point. And second, uh, this property is quite, uh, how is that? quite common throughout different field of mathematics, okay? So this property is if there's a point lying inside the intersection of two bases, okay, then you'll find a smaller basis such that uh, such that the points contained in this small basis and this smaller basis lie inside the intersection of the two basis element you start with. So can you imagine or not? Can you imagine what I am saying here? So you start with a uh, uh, set, let's say, okay. And for every point S, you would have a basis element B, say, like this. Okay. But let's say you have intersection of two basis elements, right? Intersection B1, B2. And you have a point inside here, another point inside here. Okay. You should be able to find another basis element that contain Okay, which lie inside the intersection. Okay, this is what we are trying to achieve here. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is try what is we trying to define here. So, um, if 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 there's a set that satisfy uh, these two condition, okay, so. If there says the set can satisfy these two conditions here, then we will define the topology generated by B. 
to define the topology generated generated by So what do you expect here? How should I define this topology here? Hmm? How should I define the topology here? How to define the topology? Even before that, right? Even before that, I need to declare what are the what are the elements in topology? Open set. Okay, so we need to declare what are open here. Okay, maybe we can do just by the property, by that property, but we also can declare what things are open and then check the property. Okay, so instead we will uh, declare what set are open here. Okay, so we will define uh, open set using this uh, basis element here. Okay, so you will see how they become a basis. So we will say that a set, a subset of X is open, okay, in X particularly, if for every point in Q, okay, there exists a B, there exists a basis element, such that, okay, such that this basis element contain the point X and it is contained in Q. Okay, familiar or not? How is it open in metric space? A set is open if there's an open book. Okay. okay, so that's right. Just now, uh, Tizian said we could define using the definition of close under finite intersection uh, close under arbitrary union. So we need to check whether the topology we define here is really a topology or not. Okay, we need to check whether this is really a topology. Okay, so very good exercise here. So we will do sanity check together, whether we define something that makes sense or not. So now we will prove that uh, this T here that generated by B, basis element, okay, this is called generated by B, is indeed a topology. Okay, so I need to check three property. Okay, let's check three property here. So let's check first, is B, okay, the empty set open under this sense or not? Is it open? Why? Is it open under this sense? So you need to sub u equals to v now, right? For every x in v. And then there exists b such that b contains x. Open. One. Backwardsly true again. Okay. It is open. How about x? If u equals to x. Say again. Say again. Why? Why is this river? Oh, you need to find a B for me. Is X in your is X is X your basis element or not? Depends, right? Okay. But the definition, the first definition says what? For every x in x, you will have a b in b, okay? Such that this b is uh, contained in x. But this b, of course, it is in x, okay? So you get the statement that um, for every x in x, okay, by part one of the uh, definition of b, definition of uh, b, what do I have? What do I get? I have a basis element that cover my X. Yeah, that cover my X, contain my X. And obviously, this B should be coming from X. So it is contained in X. Does that make sense? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, let's continue. So let's continue. So what the next thing we check here? We will check that the finite intersection is also open. Okay. Finite intersection also open. So how to check this? You need to show for all K. Okay, you need to show for all finite intersections. So meaning we could do induction. Okay, let's do induction. Okay. If it is just U1, right? It is kind of trivial. If U1 is open, then it is open. Eh? Right. But how about intersection of two open set? Is open or not? Okay, this is the first non-trivial thing we should look at. Right. Okay. So the first non-trivial case is uh, take two open set in my topology. Okay. And then we want to show that the intersection is in the topology. So how to show this? So I'll go back to the definition and then say that uh, for every x in the intersection, there exists a B in B such that this B contain my X and con uh, is contain sorry this B contain X and is contained in the intersection right okay make sense okay so let's take um, one point in uh, the intersection first meaning what this point is in UI and it is in U2. But U1, U2 is what? Open set, right? So these two are open, meaning so what? Meaning you use the definition of open. What is the definition of open here? You have a open set that, oh, sorry, you have a basis element that contain x and contain, is contained in the u i okay so there is this b1 b2 in the uh, basis such that x in v1 is in u1 and x in v2 is a subset in u2 lying in u2 all right so you have these two B1, B2 here. So how do you find another basis element that lies in between the intersection? So you are using the second part of the definition of basis, right? So by part two of the definition, of B, what do you have? We can really find a third one, okay, third B, such that my S is contained, uh, is in, is in B3, uh, okay, and this B3 here lie inside the intersection of B1 and B2, but B1, B2 are all in U1, U2, right? Respectively. So this intersection also lie in U1. The same. So you found a bulb. Found, sorry, found a open, no, found a basis element. Okay. Let's try not to confuse. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, yeah, so how this generalized to uh, n case, yeah? So this uh, implies that u1 does a u2 is in t. So how to generalize this to n case? Okay, so we try to extend the result uh, to u1 intercept, u2 intercept, dot, 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 un. Because suppose that we know for u n minus one, right? Inductive hypothesis. 
and then proof for n. Okay, so what do we do? We can really split out this uh, intersection here. Right? We can do u1 intercept dot 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 out to un minus 1 and intercept un. But we know that un is open. And then the previous intersection is open again by inductive hypothesis. So you are taking intersection of two open sets, and this is what we have done this. Yeah, I was like going too very fast, lah, but if you properly, properly write down the inductive hypothesis, uh, this is what you get. The main cause is here. Again, okay, I reduce anything to just discuss about intersection of two things. Okay, uh, okay, so here, very important, I need to add here. So this is by supposing uh, u1 or 2 intersection up to un minus one is open, okay, by inductive hypothesis. 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 Okay. Okay. What's the last thing we need to show? What's the one last thing we need to show? Union, arbitrary union to be open. But I think this is easier, right? Is this easier? So if you have a point in this union here, meaning you are in one of the U alpha. And then if you are in there, U alpha is open. So there's a basis element that contains you. And then that basis element should be in the, the whole union. Here. You don't need to do much work there. Make sense? You use the same basis element to cover you in the whole union. Can follow? Can you follow? Say it. You okay or not? No, okay. Okay, okay. Let's let's write down quickly. So um, x in u. Okay, what happened if you take x in u here? Meaning, you are in one of the open set. Right? Since since you, so I mean, should I put like this? Okay, u alpha for some alpha. So then, let's put beta then, so that we don't confuse. In I. In I. Since u beta is open, okay, there is this uh, b in b such that x contain b is contained in, so s contains, is contained in b, and b is in u beta, right? Then obviously this b here, this u alpha here is in u. So, I mean, I would just use the same B here to stay inside the open set. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Mm. Right. So, uh, what kind of basis we can take? Uh? Um, some generic example we do is like maybe in uh, R2, let's say in R2, la, in R2, okay, maybe we can take uh, ball, open ball, okay, correspond to the normal Euclidean uh, matrix topology that induced by Euclidean matrix, right? And uh, between two open ball here, right, if you consider a ball here, uh, sorry, a point inside this intersection, you can find a smaller ball. Or uh, maybe you can consider, so let's say this one I label as a Euclidean, so Euclidean topology. So we upgrade to topology. So, but really it's the same. Just uh, mentioning where the open set coming from on R2. Or maybe we can consider a uh, soup metric, right? Soup metric that we considered last time. Maybe we call it a soup topology then on R2. Then in this case here, maybe we get some square, 
right? Get some square or rectangle, some square. And um, so potentially you get this intersection here, and then this intersection here might be again a another basis element. Automatically become a basis element. Uh, what else? Huh? Mm, so let us go a bit more precise. So let's say, how about the basis of uh, basis of discrete topology? So what's the basis of discrete topology? What do you think? What's the discrete? What's the basis of discrete topology? What is discrete topology? So you take, you declare all the subset to be open. Okay. So what's the basis of discrete topology? Do you think? Sorry? You can just take, you can just take singleton. Singleton. Probably you can do other stuff, but uh, you can do this. This is my problem here. Okay. Um, uh, next, so we have a lemma. So we will study how this uh, basis uh, build up of topology and how to start from topology to get a uh, basis. Okay. So this lemma is stable like this. So let's have a set. And we have a basis. Basis or topology P on X. Okay. Then how does this topology look like if I have, I have this basis here? You don't want to guess on. If you have basis, right? Basis is like building something, okay? And I have this uh, whole thing topology. Okay, so how this small thing build out this big thing? It is really just the union of all the basis elements. Okay. Union of all these basis elements. Okay, so so uh, how is this true? Okay, so how is this true? So how is this true? So, uh, I think one direction could be obvious. Is one direction obvious? Which direction obvious? Where does this B come from? Yeah, B come from X, right? And then we should declare all these things open. Okay, so this B, all of all the B here should be open. So in particular, their union should be open. Uh, obvious. Can I accept this? Can I accept? <laughs> okay, <laughs> then not obvious. So I. <laughs> so, um. Yeah. So to show this, okay, if, if it's not obvious, then just start from scratch. So if you take one element in uh, the union, what, what does it mean? Element in this union here, yeah. what does it mean? X is equal to one of the B, is it? Okay, X is equal to then is equals to bi 
So Zambia, same. Huh? Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. So let me think. Uh, 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 okay, wait, 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 wait. So what does it mean? So, all right, 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 right. Okay. Anyway, so if you are in the union, so if you are in one of them. And then what? You want to show that this X is open, is it? To show that S is in the topology. Okay. And then we want to show that X is. Meaning this is you need to show do you, you, you I think my notation is not good, right? Using X is not good, is it? Because make you feel like make you feel like a point, huh? Uh, okay, let, let's 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 make this x uh, another notation. So, either is it better? Because usually open set we say u right. Okay, I'll just use u. Right? Okay. This. Hmm. Mix up with the union. Mix up with the union. V up, V up. Okay, let me see. In V is open. Okay. What's next? Huh? What's the definition? What definition you know? Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The union then is one in one of them. We want to show that B is in the topology. Then B is open. And then to say that B is open, then talk about this. We point in this set here. We want to find B in B. Then X is in B. And then B is in V. Did we go somewhere wrong? 
sang tuh tiga ya yes ya Yeah. Then the normal V. Uh-huh. Will be the set. Yes. And then the then the V is an element. Yeah, V is an element. Yeah, V is an element. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. That's why I think I know V. We are here. So did I rephrase this thing wrong? What's the original statement? Let's see. Did I rephrase this wrong? Well, let me see. Yeah, uh, did we? Did I rephrase? Maybe I phrased this thing wrong. Because they write in word, I write in. Uh, collection of all unions. Collection of all unions. Oh, I just said a union. So this is a collection of all unions. Okay. So I think we, I phrased this thing wrong. So. Let me write down it works and then let me see how we translate into uh, so then oh, so. T is a collection of all unions of uh, basis elements. So let's check am I doing the right thing here. Okay. okay, so how should I write this? Uh? So I should write uh, so T should be a set of uh, all type of union. Type of union. Okay, so I think it's like this. So it's all type of union. So union of B alpha alpha such that B alpha is in this collection of all unions. I think like this will make sense. Should I include more stuff? I think more different. Uh, alpha is number two. Does it make sense? Collection of all unions. So you, what, what, what is the things inside this collection? Uh, all the unions of B alpha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It is different. Different unions and then that's all of it. Ah, right. That's right. That's right. Just now I only have one union. One union. <laughs> yeah, that's why a bit weird. Because when I write down, just now when I write that down, uh, and then I think about the discrete topology. Uh, right. If it is true, right, for discrete topology, just now I already declared singleton is my basis of if I just take union of them, how do I get all the other powers there? <laughs> that was like a bit confused. So then we we go into proof really we stuck. Okay. So you see, are very important definition. Definition very important. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna show this. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna show this. So one direction is this direction here. So, uh, and, and then in this case, is it is it better? Is it obvious here? Yeah? In this case, yeah, you have something that's open, taking union of open thing should be open. Okay. Yeah, basis element open. Is it clear? Because um, the two, the two. Definition of basis, right? You can look at here. And the two definition of basis here uh, should give you this openness. Okay, you just tap B to be itself. Okay. This one should be. 
clear? Is anyone not clear about this? Yes. Do you lose the everything? Okay, why? Why? No, I think this alpha can change. This alpha is depend on the index set. It's just that I didn't write down something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just take any index. Uh, uh, you can you you can be more precise about that. This is one of the way they do here. If I don't specify what happened to this alpha, uh, it is any alpha. I mean, this alpha will live in any in that set. Oh, of course, you can make this more precise, but uh, I think too complicated. Later, later I, will, I want to say what, 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 what's the I and I. So the normal practice for like a bit hand waving, I would say hand waving. Yes, hand waving. Okay, you are, you are true that it's not too precise, but a bit hand waving, hand waving that I don't put the index set. Why I don't put the index set? Because I don't care about the index set. Yeah, a bit hand wavy. Does it make sense or not? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course you can uh, write it more precise, uh, but uh, if you write more precise, then you need to introduce a few more notation. Okay, um, so we have this side clear. How about the other side? On this side here. Okay, well, I want to take an open set, okay, and then I say that it is union of something. I take an open set and show that it's a union of something. So consider an open set. But what can I do uh, inside my open set? By the definition of open, you can look at some point, just some point in you, okay? And I was automatically be given a basis element right? such that uh, this x is in the basis element and this thing is in you, okay? Then what can I do? Yeah, we just we just uh, take union of all the points inside my U, and I will automatically get this uh, equal sign here. Okay. okay, one side is almost immediate, but the other side will require this line here, the openness of U. Okay, this is helping you going from the union to U, but U to U to the union is immediate already, right? By X in U. And then you will find yourself in one of the VX. Okay. So this is, you see, uh, this is quite a bit, seemingly a bit contradictory, right? A bit contradictory here. Yeah. It's like a small thing is equal to some uh, union of some, uh, a gigantic union or something. Okay. But this is really what happened in your open set, you know? I mean, open interval. Let's go down to the group. Open interval. Because you think of a zero one interval, right? And each, at every point you can build open set around it. And then you take union of it. You can still get back to zero one. Okay. This is actually not but not too surprising because what we have shown the, the cardinality of zero one is as big as real. So there's room to play around with these things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also about the openness uh, is special here. Yeah. Okay, the openness is really special here. Yeah. Okay, any question before I take a break? On this uh, lemma here. Ah, okay, maybe let's let make last remark here before we break. So our remark. Uh, 
uh, although uh, every open set u in x can be uh, expressed as a union of basis element, okay, like what we did just now. But uh, the expression of the expression for u is not unique. Okay, it's not unique. So, for example, if you consider the Euclidean topology on R, I can already first uh, split 0, 1 into 0 to 0, 5, union 0, 0.45, comma, 1, like that. And then I can go from 0 to 0, 0.45, and then union 0, 0.5, comma, 1. Then 0, 0.5. Oh, okay, yeah. Good. Okay, so it's not you. Uh, it's not unique because you can have overlap. Okay. And uh, this overlap stuff, right? Uh, you take differential geometry. They will have similar stuff there. To overlap, to add, there's a, some overlap uh, when you describe a uh, manifold, a surface. Okay. Um, right, so let's take a break until 12.21 and then we'll resume. See you. You come here or... Hello.
Tôi <cười> Okay. Yong 
瑜伽，是瑜，金波，定语，天，白烟，白烟，加一，加一啊，天黑，天黑呀，温泉，泡面就是偏土啊，是不是？你呢？你呢？你现在他是讲，我好了。Apology 就是你的白皮，就是啊 ，set of the open subset of you。这意思？就是这些 open set 就连起来，然后 open 再 define 来这个。你讲哪个？你讲这个？哪里跑出来？讲这个？哪个 U？ 哦，这个 U 哈，这个 U 是说，这个是 U， 是说里面的还有其他的 open set 是什么？在这个 U 会不会在这套包容里面？这个 U 会，这个 U 会在这 topology 里里面，但是不会在这个 basis 里面，啊，不一定的。我们是根据属于是 basis 说属于是 open， 嗯嗯，只要你这个 set contain 那个 op 那个 basis 的，你就 open， 但是要每一个点你都会做。这 basis generate 出来这套包容器，它是不是 unique？ unique 哈、啊， uniqueness 啊， uniqueness。unique， unique， unique 啊，因为我们已经有这个 defining property proof 了，这个。我们有这个地方呢 ，OK， 这个是错了，嗯，这个就是对、嗯。我们已经知道它是谁了，所以你另外一个也是它，所以那两个一定要，因为你是 start from 同一个 basis 来弄出来 ，basis 出来。哎、okay. ，这个是它的 defining， 你要知道啊，就就是它的 defining relation， 其实。嗯，这下面啊也是这个吧？嗯，但是。在这里面叫做 open 的东西，是因为符合那个条件嘛？符合那个条件的东西，这些全部符合的。哦，所有 open 的都要在这上。Generate 吗 ？OK， 呃、uh, ，Let's continue。嗯。So, um, if you have a topology, on the other hand. How do you find basis? Okay, how do you find basis? Let's go and end on here. Yeah, basis is the one that we defined just now, eh? of the uh, vector space. Eh? So let's start from a uh, uh, topological space. Okay. So we have S and T. Okay, we have a set, and then we know who are open here. Okay, this is what we know. And uh, we want to define a set, which we claim is a basis. Let's call it a C. So what is this C here? Well, obviously, this C should be a subset, contain subset in uh, my topological space. And what's the thing you need to consider here? Every open U in X. Okay, this this we know because we already know what's topology on X. So we know who are open here already. Okay, so you need to take any open set in X and any point in X such that uh, X is in C and then C is in the U.
Okay, so we need to check that take any open set in X, okay, and any X, okay, such that X is in your subset, then your subset need to be in the open set. Make sense? Yeah. Does it make sense? All the points such that it is in your set and your set is contained in the open set. Okay, then uh, C is a basis of T. And, uh, and we can reconstruct our topology using the set here. Is this far from the openness in T or not? Openness in T means what? A set in T is open. If for every point in the set, okay, you can find a basis and that contain the X and it's contained in your open set. Okay, so we're trying to like make this C to be the B. This one. So we need to prove first this is the basis, and then we will prove that this is really uh, this topology is generated by this set here. Okay, there are a few things we need to do. Now, first of all, uh, yeah. You mean open you mean what does open mean? Huh? Yeah, 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 because yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, because uh, the only open thing I know is the T there. So this open should be referred to the open in T. Make sense? Or? Okay, yeah, yes. So you start with a topology. Okay, and then I'm trying to find this basis. And then I show that this basis will generate again back to my topology. I can get uh, topology from this basis again. Does it make sense? Yeah. How many elements in C? How many elements? Can can have any and have a lot. Yeah. So, as there's an X in C, C can be this set. As long as there's an X in C, and then this C have to be contained in the open set you start with. Yeah, yeah. That satisfies this property. I mean, it can be a lot of depend on I mean, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so for every x in x such that x is in C, and then uh, this C is in U. How do I make sure? I mean, this is the thing. If it is true, then this C is in the set I consider. If not true, then this set is not what I want. No? Uh, a bit, a bit compact. Uh, I think this statement. I hope no wrong. Eh? This is a statement from um, Chris. If you want to check, is this is it? I translate correct. Uh, I think correct. Uh, at least the proof here should be good. A bit compact. This this definition a bit compact here. Yeah. yeah I, at first I read. I also think that whether X need to be U or not, but I think no need. It's just x in the matrix, and not matrix, matrix. The x in the topological space such that this x, if it is in C, okay, then this C has to be in the um, open same standard wave. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. 
So if you want to check, you can uh, try and uh, compare with the uh, Chris. So I think the proof there was not wrong. So first, what we need to do for basis? First property is what? I was saying first property is quite obvious. So why is it quite obvious? Let's check. So first property says what? Okay. For each point in your topological space, X, in your set, okay, there's this uh, uh, B in the basis that you consider such that X is in B. So we should really take for every for every S. Sorry. And then and what? Okay, so there's a C. You see, uh, there's a C such that X is in C and then should be in some U, but U is already in X. Okay. So let's see. This is the one we want to check. Okay. Um, what's the second one? So, second property is. X is in the intersection of two elements in C, okay? Implies there's a third element such that, uh, such that X is in C3, which is in C1 intersection C2. Okay. What is C1, C2 here? What is C1, C2 here? C1 has some open set, is contained in some open set, right? C1 is contained in some open set. C2 also contains some open set. U1 is a set, U2 is a open set. So they should have some C3 lying inside this open set here. But yeah, yeah. Which, which division? The top hand. Is it wrong? Let me see. For oh, RX in your, is it wrong? Hand? Let me see. It's all the same act. We uh -huh. take an example of three, uh, three elements. <laughs> the, 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 the topology could be X, Y, and uh -huh. uh, single element A, and then OX, EX, 
I have, let's take X to be equal to B. Uh -huh. but there's no open set can contain X. Sure, it's there. Yeah, is again. So, 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 wait, wait. So, uh, yeah. the element, the, the set with three elements we did yesterday. And set with three elements, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the topology could be X, Phi, and our singleton. And this? Yeah. So, the, if we take small X, uh, in, in this definition of big C, we take small X to be B, and to, to be the middle one, and then small yeah. X to be the middle one, yeah. Mm -hmm. There is there any oh this is this is not complete place of those this is the yeah the O set contains this set. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Scrub this. See X X or U are X in U are never say X in U are copy wrong again. Let me check. Need to be careful what this set is. Yeah, so I was like translate loss in uh, or originality. So because in this uh, book is in the word, so I was trying to make it into set notation to be a bit functional. Easier to see, but seems like I could be the wrong set. Anyone got a book? What book is it? Lemma uh, 10. Lemma 13.2. Yeah, okay. Let's change. So you have an open set. Okay, so this one is like really resemble what we had just now. Okay, so if you have an open set and then you have uh, every point in an open set and then uh, X is in C and then the C have to be in U. So let's go back to the first one again. So if every set in X, I want to cover it by a C. Okay, so, um, so your point should be lies inside some open set, right? In particular, X itself is open, right? So in particular, X itself is open. Things X is open, then there exists a C such that C contains X and containing X, big X. Okay, how about second one? X is C one means of C1. And let's check again to be precise again. So if I have two, correct. Okay. So if I have this two happen, what happens? Um, actually, we need extra things here, right? We might need C1, C2 to be open. If there are two open set, then only then we can use C to extract the CR, the extra CR. 
Okay. So can we see that? Can we see that Y C one C two are open? Because if C one C two open, right? Then the intersection here is open. Then you can pick a C out of this. Why this kind of C is open? Open in what sense? Eh? Open in the sense of this topology here, right? So what's this topology here? How to see this C1, C? <laughs> it should be open already. Yeah, it be open. Ah, okay. Otherwise, we don't have chance to do it huh? because it would be circular if I say this is generated by C and then say that this C is open. But I want to prove that it is generated by C. Okay. Yeah. So I think that makes more sense. So these are open already. Okay. Okay, I think this makes more sense. Okay, otherwise, I don't know how it's open in this topology. Because because I didn't I although I fixed some open set, I didn't really tell you how to check whether these are open set. Okay, so we really need to start with our open set already. Okay. If we start with open set, right? First first property here become even easier, I guess. We don't need to take the whole X. The C itself is already open. Okay, yeah, good, Very good. So we have already opened here. So since we already opened there, then, uh, then uh, we can take intersection. So since C1 and C2 are by definition open, C1 intersect C2 also open because this is, this is by the definition of uh, topology. Okay, first is by definition, actually by construction. First one by construction is more precise. By construction of uh, C here. Okay, so C1 and C2 are open, then uh, again uh, by construction of uh, C, then this two. Then we can find C3 perfect, C3 uh, contain X. It contains C one. Okay, good. Yeah. Wow. Missed quite a lot of things. Huh? <laughs> yeah, these things are quite important. Okay. So you want to construct a basis. What do you do? You need to take open set, and then open set such that uh, the property here satisfies. Otherwise, uh, you can't really get it. Okay. Uh, the final thing, uh, let's show that uh, actually, if you generate bases, uh, generate topology using this basis, you regain your original topology. Okay, so how we do, how do we show this? So let's fix some notation here. So let T be the collection of open set. So this is what we have before. Okay, but I didn't tell you why are they open, how are they open. And we want to show that uh, the one that we have control on, which is the topology uh, built up by uh, C, is actually the same as the topology we started with. So this is what we want to do. So there are two directions here. So let's do like T contains in T prime. Okay, so let's do this. So it will show that open set in T is in T prime. So what do you do? So you take an open set in T. Okay. So we want to show that it's in T prime.
So how do you show that? So I want to show that. To show that. Uh, U and T and I want to show that. Yes, again, so I want to show that U is in T. So if it's open in T, then it's in open in T. How do you show that it's open in T prime? This is by the definition we had just now. How is it open in the topology generated by the basis? That is what? For every point in web, for every point in U, there exists a C. Again, let's say you can on X in my basis such that X is in CX and then CX is contained in U. Okay, we're going to do this. So, how do we do it? So we have we have so this story. So what do we have? Well u equals to union of before that I think we can union of everything first, right? Okay, and then everything here, what happens to the things here? I can use CX to them. Why can I do this? And this is the definition of C here. Correct. Okay. And then is this enough? Huh. Sorry. This one is E in I think it should be like this. Huh? So, yeah. Sense or not? Correct. Be careful, uh, there's a lot of uh, in, 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 in uh, sometimes it's an element in, sometimes a subset in. Okay, so I need to be a bit careful here. Yeah. We done with this. Done or We have the ending. So we Yeah. So we check for every U. Okay. We check for every U. There's the thing that covered. Okay. Any question or not? This part. Uh, no question. No. Okay, let's do the other part. Yeah, how about this one? Suppose uh, there's an open set in uh, there's an open set in T prime, but uh, by previous lemma, say so. If you have a um, topology generated by basis element. What do you get? Your open set is really the union of elements. So it's a union of elements of C. Okay. But uh, but the thing I for we forget I forget just now C have to be open. Okay. So but uh, this C here 
are all open set in T. Okay, so uh, W should be a subset of T. Uh, in T. A union of open set. Okay, so what we have shown here is uh, you start with an open uh, topology. So what? Okay, so what we have done today is we start with a basis, right? We start a basis, and then uh, we generate topology with this basis. Okay, and uh, how does it look like? Okay, how does it look like? It is uh, T uh, equals to this union of uh, basis element. Okay, so this is how the topology looks like. In if in the case of you have a topology, you want to find uh, a basis, you can look for this set here. Okay, this special set here, and then it is a base. It will be a basis of your topology, and the topology you started with is really generated by this uh, basis element. Okay, so the special thing about this set is they are open set and then they satisfy this uh, containing property. Okay. Yeah, and this is so far what we have done. Any question before we break for the day? Yes. You mean this this guy will this this uh, this this C will give finer and finer cannot find them. Okay, smaller. Smaller, you mean if you give another basis, other bases will contain more things than this. Question to think about it. You mean this is like uh, I'm saying. This is the minimal minimal thing you can ask for. Or oh, seems like yeah, seems like it, but uh, I never check it. So we I think we can try and check it whether if you have other bases or not. And then this is the okay. Meaning you want to show that this basis will contain in all other bases that generate this topology. Or it is the intersection of all bases that generate this topology. Mm, I think this is a good question. Good question. I'm trying to show this. Yeah, I think this is good. I think I can think about it also. See if we can figure out. This is the intersection of uh, all bases. Oh, just come up with a counter example. Right. Okay. Yeah, good question. I think this question is good. Mm. Okay, any other question? Other question? Okay. Okay, um, so anything um uh, you want to ask about? Assignment, you can email me, message me. Okay, please don't feel, uh, feel embarrassed, uh, feel shy, uh, feel anything. Okay, I'm open to asking. It's not, I'm not like punish you. Uh, we are open to discussion. Okay. Okay. So see you next time. Oh right, right, right. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Yeah. yeah. Reminder. Next Monday, God. Replacement. What time? Huh? What time? Huh? Two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Is this the last one? Huh? Last week. So one more. One more. I can't remember already. So one more. Yeah, so one more. So uh, consecutive with. 29 and 6, and then we will finish the case. Okay, so see you next Monday. Over the holiday. Yeah, over the. Hey, hey.